In the last video we talked about classification trees or decision trees and today we're going to be some problems that decision trees has in terms of generalization and variance and how to fix that. So remember, the good things about decision trees was interpretability. So remember that you could explain this to a, to a friend or your grandma in a couple of sentences. And variable importance, that means that you can select what features are more relevant in this classification scheme. There are some benefits also related to fast learning and this is especially important when you're dealing with big data. But there is a big con, and con has to do with high variance. So if you remember, we can have this model complexity axis. So in one extreme, we have a very high bias model. And by bias, I mean that I'm trying to fit reality to a straight line, for instance. And you can have low bias, so you can, uh, you can have a very good description of your training data. But variance has, has to do with this overfitting. So maybe you are doing very well with your training data but you're doing poorly with your testing data. So there is one way to, to fix that in, in the case of decision trees. And it has to do with what is called bugging. And bugging is an acronym or a, some, some kind of a summary of this idea of bootstrapping aggregation. So let me show you this with an example. Imagine that we have this data set. This is the cardio data set. And imagine that we have only dealing with 25 uh, patients in, in this data frame. So what we can do now is, is try to select, instead of these 25 uh, patients, we're going to take 25 patients with repetition. So for instance, you throw out a random number between 1 and 25, and then select number 3, and then we're going to choose this patient, another random number, 15, another 1, 19, uh, by chance 3 again, and so on and so forth, and then we end up with another data frame. In this case, we're going to call this a bootstrap data frame, in which we may have some repetitions, but we are playing basically with the same length as, as the original data set. Okay, you can do this very easily with caret, but if you want to do this by hand, you can use the sample in function. So imagine again that we are playing with 25. We're going to sample 25 numbers using replacement. So if you do this once, just by chance you can see here that, for instance, 18 is repeated twice, and number 2 is, is repeated four times. Again, you generate a new sequence, and 20 now is twice, 16 is four times, and so on and so forth, okay? So basically, graphically, you're, what you're doing is this. So you have this number of patients, and then you're shuffling these numbers with repetition. And the good thing is that you're kind of faking up, and, and instead of having just one data set, you have B data sets. And this is, of course, this is faking the data because you have some repetitions, but the good thing is that you have some variability here. And you can do use this to, to reduce variance, to, to check how variability is affecting your training phase. Now, let's see what's the consequence for decision trees. So now you run this bootstrap, you create a new tree, another tree, and as you can see here, playing with different training data sets changes a lot. So for a fixed complexity parameter, you can have trees as small as this or as big as this one. And this is the interesting thing about playing with variability, that you, you end up with a collection of trees. This is not yet a random forest, this is a bagging forest. And the idea is that basically you can overall have a more information with B data, data frames than with just one one. So how can you use that? Again, now you have a new observation, a new patient with X63, is a male, and so on and so forth. And now you run, you, you, you use these classifiers to predict if this is high risk or low risk. So you plug this in this tree, and then you end up saying, okay, this is high risk, with this tree is low risk, and so on and so forth. And then you're going to use a very simple rule, the majority rule. So here you can see in this forest you have three greens and four purples. So basically this wins, and then somehow by, by the magic of random numbers, this classification is better than each of the trees alone. And again, this is called bagging. There is one problem here, is that the trees are highly correlated because you're using, basically you're shuffling your data, but you're playing with the same data over and over again. So is there an improvement of this? And the answer is yes, of course, this is a rhetorical question. And this answer is random forest. So we are going to use a couple of random sources. So we are going to play randomly with the data, but also randomly with the structure of the tree. So let me show you how. So we're going to start with bugging meaning that we're going to create these data frames by mocking up from the original data frame. But at the decision tree, so for instance, we, at this point, for in, the, in, the, in the first uh, decision that we're going to make, we're also going to split the data, the features. So we're going to split the columns of the data frame. So just by chance, I'm going to play just with three of them. 
there are going to be sex, cholesterol, and this parameter, I don't remember what it is. And then we make this classifi classification, and again, in this branch of the tree, we shuffle again, we select three features, and in this case is sex, CP, and target, okay? And so on and so forth, okay? So we end up with random trees with random data. This sounds absolutely crazy, but this is called a random forest. So basically, you have a couple of decisions to make. One has to do with the number of bootstraps, B, and the other thing is with the number of M of features that we are going to use for the random forest. Again, if M equals P, if you are playing with all the variables, all the features in the data set, this is bugging alone. But if M is below than P, we have random forest. Again, this is crazy, but uh, this the Bible of uh, statistical learning discusses, this works miraculously well. So for some reason that, again, is related with chance and with random variables, this performs really well. Here you can see how uh, cross-validation allows us to decide which is the best value of fm. But again, there is this rule of thumb. If you take the square root of the number of features, for instance, uh, before we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 features, but the square root of 8 is almost 3. But if you take 3, probably the, the, the error is going to be uh, low enough so we can reduce the effect of high uh, variance and, and uh, still have the good performance of high variability. This is pretty simple to implement in Caret as usual. So again, we're going to replace our part in this in in this method sequence by random forest. The only thing that we have to do is how many trees we want to create. Typically, 500 is good enough. A thousand is a lot, and uh, let's say 100 is not long enough. But you have to play with that. And again, we have to play with the optimal value of m. So we can use cross validation to random this one. So here. In cross-validation, we're going to sequence from 1 to the number of rows, which is P, in, in the discussion below. And we can use different sequences, different metrics. For, ins uh, for instance, we can use accuracy, we can use kappa, or we can use the area under the curve of the rock curve. Okay. Why is this so fascinating? Because remember, decision trees are good for explicability, but they have high variance. Bugging reduces correlation. So, sorry, introduces variation in the trees, but inc uh, increases correlation. Random forests reduce correlation. And now, nowadays, the hot topic is called boosting. So if you go to Kaggle and you take a look at all the competitions in the last years, all of the competitions have been won by an algorithm, including the word boosting. Today, the most trendy word is edgy boosting. So if you run this in your model, you're going to win the Kaggle competition. No, I'm joking, you're not going to do that, but probably somebody else is going to win the competition using XGBoost. So, in summary, take the benefits of random trees and then shuffle the data, shuffle the number of features in each decision, and then you end up with a random forest. And if you use random forests in your project, you're going to win.